Hey everybody, and welcome to another Jamovi video. In this one, we're gonna talk uh, uh, more modules, and we're gonna talk about an updated module, updated module. So modules are great JASP inventions, little R packages with uh, Jamovi wrappers on them. So let's take a look at which one we're talking about today. And I have a video of uh, the previous version of this. So let's take a look, and you can go look at that uh, video if you want. Let's go to Manage Installed. We click on that plus, and we go to Manage Installed, and we're gonna go to Available, and I'm gonna type in GAM. Okay, so general uh, GAM LG or GAM LG, uh, J, so not G, <laughs> uh, general analyses for linear models in Jamovi 2.6.6. Marcelo Gallucci made this module, made it a couple of years ago, and it's just a big old suite for general linear model or a linear mixed model or generalized linear models or generalized mixed models. He created version three, and I think he created it recently, like in late, late 2003. I haven't seen it. So this is the first, or at least I played with it yesterday uh, when I was preparing to make this video. Um, so I haven't uh, hadn't seen it prior to then. I, as you may have been following my videos, spent a lot of time in the second half of 2023 doing Jasp videos, just getting back into Jamovi because they haven't had a major release in a while. But then I thought to myself, eh, maybe modules, maybe the 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 side uh, the the packages, the R packages uh, are updated, or there are new ones that I can mess around with. And Marcelo gladly obliged. So he has GAM LJ3. So this is the same module but version three right so as opposed to version two this is 3.1.6 however he does say that it is an experimental module it's an experimental package so there are still kinks to be ironed out for version three but he thinks that it is more robust a suite for estimation general linear model linear mixed generalized and generalized mixed for uh, each family models can be estimated with categorical or continuous variables with options to facilitate estimation of interactions simple slopes simple effects post hoc test contrast analysis and visualization of the results okay so th that exact same uh, description here. Uh, GAMLJ3 is a major rewriting of the previous module. Analysis done with GAMLJ version 2, which is this one up here, are not compatible with GMA uh, version 3, GAM, so should be open with previous version of the module. So that's an important information to note that if you're you're talking if you're using these or you're or you're gonna um uh, jump into one or the other and you're like, oh, let me compare it to my previous GAMLJ. You can't. You have to have two separate windows open. Two, th the data sets and the output have to be corresponding to the same GAM version. So let's go ahead and jump in. And uh, well, first, we got to open up a regression um, uh, set of data. So I am going to open. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's open up the parenthood one in LSJ data. So parenthood LSJ, LS, LSJ data is one of the Let's see where where are you? It's, it's one of these, and you can you can add it, and it's just a set of data sets to use with learning statistics with Jamovi free text. So we are opening that, and what we have is the amount of hours that Dan has slept, the amount of hours the baby has slept, the amount of um the level of grumpiness experienced by Dan, and the day. Right, so day this is a hundred days of marking that. How many hours did they sleep? And is it grumpy? Is it grumpy? So let's go ahead and find G L A. G A L M. I, I wish this was in alphabetical order. I could. I don't remember where it was. So let me see if I click on this. If I can find it this way. There it is. Okay. So G A M L. So it's after flex plot. Flex plot. Where's my flex? Plot? Linear models is what it's called. Okay. So we have G A M L J, which is the version two, and then we have version three right here. So they get put in the same grouping uh, up here. So just be aware of that if you have both installed. Although if you're just now coming to this, I would recommend installing both of them just so you have a more stable version. Because remember, Marcelo places this as a experimental package. Let's, let's just call that. Let's just call that beta, shall we? Right. Um, so I'm just going to show you general linear model. You can look into these three on your own, but just to show you the general linear model. OK, so what we want to do is we want to predict how much the baby slept. I'm just making this up. Uh, this is probably not the actual way that they did it. I want to predict how much. Uh, no, I want to predict how much Dan slept from bait, how much the baby slept and what the level of grumpiness. So let's let's see if we can predict uh, how much Dan slept. That, sorry, covariates go down here. So Dan grump and covariates go down here. You got to separate that. So something different for this general linear model that you'll notice is that we have a ton of effect sizes that we can check. So one of the new effect sizes is, is this epsilon squared. So apparently this is the last uh, couple of decades where epsilon squared has become a little bit more useful than um, Eta squared. Okay, so we've got eta squared here. You'll see eta squared reported as effect sizes for ANOVAs. And of course, ANOVA is just a fancy regression with categorical, with only categorical independent variables. Um, and, but epsilon is, is increasingly being shown as an effect size for that. And apparently it is more accurate and more robust than partial eta squared. Uh, and then we have omega squared. If you have any kinds of repeated measures, 
omega squared is useful for that. Note that these are all lowercase Greek symbols, and I'm using the Greek name for the symbols themselves. Okay. And then of course, by default, we have our betas. And betas in beta in regression is going to be there all of the time. All the time. So that's the first part of this to note is that there are several uh, effect sizes that we can add. And I'm just gonna add all of them. Sure, why not? It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to add them. You can see Jamobi's working. It'll put them all in the omnibus test. As you can see, they don't appear anywhere else. Okay. So Dan Grump, why is, oh, Dan Grump is, uh, I see what's happening. Mm, I don't like that. So this is parameter estimates for every level of Dan, of Dan Grumpiness uh, compared to the 41. I don't know if I like that. It's kind of, kind of weird, but you know, what are you going to do? Dan Grump doesn't have, you know what? I'm going to change this. Dan Grump does not have to be. It is a continuous variable, to be honest with you. Let's there. Yeah, yeah, we'll get we'll get back to that. Let's go back to analyses. Let's go back to general linear model. And let's put Dan Grump back down here. Okay, and that's a little bit better. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, if you're going to follow along, just go ahead and make that change there because it is a scale. It's a scale variable, whether it's a whole number or not. I didn't like what it was doing with the parameter estimates. That was, that's weird. Okay, so we've got our effect sizes here. We've got uh, eta squared, partial eta squared, omega squared, partial omega squared, epsilon squared, and partial epsilon squared. You can see that they're relatively, I mean, for the model itself, they're relatively the same, uh, which is that, yes, these two things predict the level of sleep that Dan received the night before, right? So they make, it makes sense. Um, and, and you can see that our 0.833 is looking like our R squared anyways, or our adjusted R squared. Um, and as next, you can get the confidence intervals. So estimates of the confidence intervals, that would be right here. So we've got our estimate, we've got our confidence interval estimate. You can also get your beta CI and you can specify what the confidence interval is. So you can do 90, you can do uh, 99, whatever it is that you want. Right? Um, estimation, you can check do not run and it doesn't run anything which is such a weird thing to do, right? And so I'm going to uncheck. Um, before I go any further, let's take a look at the output here. So you get the model info and you get a lot of it. You, you get a lot of more descriptive information um, than you would in the regression module up here, right? This linear regression module. So model type is a linear model, ordinarily squares for a continuous Y. And the model is um, a linear model, Dan sleep regressed on inter in internet, <laughs> intercept, Dan grump and baby sleep. And it's using the Gaussian or normal distribution of residuals. We're going to do an F omnibus test. I think you can... You, you can show this one or not. This, that's this one right here. Sample size is 100, converged, no Y transformation, and then the confidence interval method for the estimates and the CIs is the Wald test. Perfect. We also get, so we get our model fit information, our R squared, our adjusted R squared, degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom for residuals, degrees of freedom here is how many predictors I have, including the intercept. So three minus one is two, uh, an F of 247 with no decimal. I wonder uh, if the size of the F here is cutting, truncating the display, and then a p-value of a very, 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 very small number of f is 247. And then we get the omnibus test here for each of the, the, so the full model together, all of the predictors in one intercept, Dan Grump and baby sleep all in one. That's what this is, the top row. It gets partialed out for our two, uh, per, two variable predictors, and then we have our residuals, and then we have our total down here. So, and this is where, again, all of the effect sizes go. And you can see that Dan Grump is more predictive of how much Dan slept than how much uh, the baby slept, as you can see there. Um, and that makes a lot of sense, at least from a practical standpoint. And down here are our parameter estimates. So we have our intercept, our Dan Grump and baby Grump, uh, baby sleep, excuse me, um, and how they um, converge to produce our prediction value here. And then we have our standardized betas. So again, the amount of sleep that Dan receives is negatively correlated with uh, how much grump, right? So more sleep, less grump, more grump, less sleep, that kind of thing. And then, you know, a while it's significant, it's not a big as uh, it's not as a big effect as uh, Dan Grump is how much the baby gets to sleep. No, you know, I think you could do uh, this the other way. So Dan sleep, Dan Grump, and, and I just made stuff up, guys. So so, so don't look too closely into it. it. It all makes sense because this is canned data. Uh, going through, I'm not going to go through all of these collapsible menus, but you can specify your model and you can say whether or not you want the F test as your omnibus or the LRT, and it will change the um, values in. Here. And then, of course, you can include or not include the intercept. If the intercept doesn't make any conceptual or practical sense, um, you might want to remove it. Otherwise, keep it in there. For this particular case, while the intercept is not actually, um, oh no, the inter inter intercept is because Dan sleep could equal zero. So, or yeah, the grumpiness and baby sleep could equal zero. So that makes sense here. So that's that's the intercept there. And you can, you can see that if I uncheck that, R squared drops dramatically, right? None of this makes any sense if you don't include the intercept. Um, now, if you have a different model, you can activate a model comparison. Now, you'd have to have a nested model in here to do the comparison. Uh, that's not something that I do on, a, uh, on a, in general, so we're going to move on. You can code your factors here, so names and estimate tables, contrast. Uh, you can do covariate scaling, right? So centered, Z scores, or original, cent and, and we can do that. So these are centered around zero, but we can use our original scores for this. Um, it doesn't change. That should be, nope, that should be original. 
Obviously, our parameter estimates don't change, but it does change our estimates down here and what makes sense. So if the baby doesn't get any sleep and the Dan is not grumpy, he must have gotten or he or she must have gotten 11 hours of sleep. Doesn't make any sense, but there you go. Uh, by default, centered, it will give you just the most labeled thing, right? Uh, convariance conditioning, plus or minus one standard deviation. You can do two, three, 1.25 if you want, or you can do a percentile. So these are either, either or. So mean plus or minus one standard deviation or percentiles, 50th percentile plus or minus 25%. Covariates labeling. You can do labels, values, and all kinds of things. You can do, uh, you can, a dependent variable is in the original scale, right? So Dan sleep is still expressed in hours. Um, and then scaling is only for completed cases. You can do post hoc tests, right? We can do a Bonferroni. We can get Cohen's D for that. This would be up here and it would go in this. But unfortunately, we don't have uh, this Dan Grump is a continuous variable. So none of these post hoc tests actually work for it. So you'd have to have like a dummy coded variable or a categorical predictor. You can get plots, right? So we can look at plots. We can do um, baby sleep on the horizontal axis and separate lines for Dan. And um, our display is going to be standard error. And there you go. So it'll show us mean. Uh, minus one standard deviation, mean plus one standard deviation, and then the regular mean. So it kind of puts that in there. Um, you can plot the observed scores. That's what it looks like there. So this is baby sleep, Dan sleep, um, and then how much. Uh, so this is baby sleep combined with Dan Grump as lines, and then what those values are, y axis observed range. So you can just sort of truncate the range. Original uh, x scale, if you want. Nothing much changes there, and at least in this data set. Um, and you can get varying line types to make it a little bit more uh, easily read. So the mean of Dan Grump. So his average grumpiness puts you in the middle here, right? So it's still a positive relationship. At, and those are all of your plots, right? And if you had more variables, you can make separate. You can get simple effects, right? And you can do moderation in here because uh, interactions work. So maybe we can do Dan Grump as a simple effects variable. Um, it should. Oh, let's do moderator here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there we go. Simple effects and we can get simple interactions as well. Right. So the moderator is baby sleep. Does it moderate? And we get all of our effect sizes here. Uh, it doesn't really moderate. And then we can get the same thing for um, simple effects of Dan Grump here. Simple effects and parameter estimates for these. And they're all the same. Uh, so we can do that. We can get estimated marginal means for all of our variables. This will open up a new one so you can get the mean of Dan Grump, minus one standard deviation, plus one standard deviation. So this is kind of mapping what, what you have down here. Assumption checks, you can get the homogeneity test, you can get the test of normality. These will show up oh, down here, right? The homogeneity of residual variance is the Broish-Pagan test, and the normality of residuals is the kamolgorov smirnov test or the shapiro vilk test. Okay, and you can get QQ plots and residual histograms and all of that stuff. Right? Let's look at the QQ plot for this, actually. Pretty good. And then some options here. You can do some bootstraps for your... Uh, Confidence intervals, you can do a robust standard error estima esti estimation, standard or robust. You can get on intercept, on effect sizes, on coefficients. You can save your predicted values, your residual values, and on the tables, you can remove notes there. There. I think this is a very robust, very robust, feature-rich general linear model. It gives you pretty much everything you need to uh, report a regression, a mixed model, generalized regression or a mixed model, that kind of thing, using ordinary least squares. And... You can compare models like I showed you over here. You can have nested models, all of that kind of stuff. So the GAM LJ3 module is active now, but be aware it's still in beta. It's still experimental. There still might be bugs. I didn't encounter any bugs uh, except for, you know, it, it, it being actually incorrect. It was an error because of my doing as opposed to uh, on the Dan Grump variable. So that's it. And that's how you use the GAM LGJ, excuse me, three module. Uh, I expect more advancements in the coming months for this module. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or other feedback, please leave those down below. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.